What is up, Stockton, California? This is 93.5 KWDC Delta College Radio, and I'm your girl, Carolita. And this is your boy, Choi. We got the mayor leaking up in the building. What's up? What's up, 209? <laughs> we out of here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Stockton? You're listening to 209 Talk on 93.5 KWDC Stockton. 209 Talk is a collaboration where local college students sit down with the mayor. The show you're tuned into right now was put together by students enrolled in the broadcasting courses in the digital media department at San Joaquin Delta College. Thanks for listening and supporting College Radio. This week, we're going to be talking about homelessness in the 209. Or homelessness. <laughs> How are you doing today, Mayor? Or we have Megan Silva and we have Mayor Lincoln with us. How are we doing? <laughs> not an hour. <laughs> like we're all not awake yet. Yeah, we're still waking up. It's all good. It's early in the morning. Hey, it's yeah. early in the morning. Uh, we're in Stockton in the 209. Uh, I believe the semester just got started. Right? Yes. Oh, yeah. So uh, we're getting back in the swing of things. It's all good. A lot of homework. Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm taking nine courses, nine classes. <laughs> nine classes? But some of them are like workout classes. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only doing three this time around because it's you know, wrapping things up last semester before graduating. Oh, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, just pushing through it, I guess. Congratulations in May. <laughs> May 18th. Count down the days. May 18th. You know the date already? Um, Of course I know the date. I'm oh ready. My gosh. <laughs> this That's will be awesome. my second time graduating. Oh. So I don't, I'm not looking at dates or nothing. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's my whatever first it is. Ever graduation because I was class of 2020, so I can't oh, wait to see what the wow. hat's like. Yeah, congratulations yeah. to the both of you. Thank you. And I may see you guys on May 18th because uh, my son is projected to graduate as well. Oh, congratulations! Oh, congratulations. Yeah, on May 18th. <laughs> That's a big step. That's the his because he's graduating high school and college, right? Uh, he's getting a well. He's graduating college, and then next year he graduates high school. Oh wow! wow. Backwards. I like yeah. that. That is <laughs> so cool to be able to say, like, yeah, I got my AA before I was even done with right. high school. So t- today we're getting into homelessness, and that has a big, been a big part in Stockton. So I just want to get your take on the home- what, the homeless, I don't want to call it a situation, but I guess it is, here in Stockton. How do you feel like that is affecting Stockton? Well, what we, refer, what we refer to it as is like a homeless crisis mm-hmm. um, or a humanitarian crisis. And I think it was important for the community to understand is that even through COVID um, and, and the various situations that we've had to deal with as a community over the past couple of years, uh, homelessness has still remained the number one um, issue or, or concern uh, or crisis for, for our community. And so... Uh, our local government, I mean, we're working really hard, you know, to do the best we can uh, to, to mitigate uh, this this crisis that we're dealing with right now. Has it been boosted since COVID? Like, did homelessness go up since COVID? Now, that's interesting that you asked that question because um, there's what's called a point in time count. So back in 2019, uh, we had a point in time count. And when COVID hit in 2020, we didn't have our next point in time count until... Uh, January of 2022. Mm. So uh, that was essentially three years later. Yeah. Right. Uh, And so what we found when we did our point in time count in January of 2022 was that uh, our homeless homeless population or unsheltered residents in Stockton declined by 3%. Oh, wow. Uh, So what that tells us is that uh, the efforts that we've been making and partnering with various organizations in our community uh, in outreach and providing supportive services in collaboration with the county of, of San Joaquin, um, they're, we're moving in the right direction. And how do you do that count? How is that count taken? So point in time count means that uh, you pick a day mm-hmm. and it's, it sig- signifies a specific point in time. Uh, that the community comes together, various organizations, uh, government agencies, and we go out and we canvass the entire county, the entire city on Mm -hmm. that particular day uh, within that particular time frame, and uh, we count those unsheltered residents. You ask the people if they're unsheltered, or you just count them, like, could you see them sleeping? 
Yes, so we go to the various encampments, uh, locations. Oh, so you have conversations with them? Absolutely. Uh Uh, In fact, there's a a survey, and Mm -hmm. provide so long as they're willing to participate um, in answering just a few questions, uh, we're able to capture that information and that data. And what that allows us to do as as a county, as a city, it allows us to really align our resources so that we could be very intentional, very strategic, uh, about meeting uh, the needs because homelessness is so complex. Right. Uh, it impacts uh, every community differently. Mm-hmm. And so it's important for us that as we uh, work hard to advocate for additional financial resources at the uh, state and federal level, that we have a strategic plan um, to, to address homelessness uh, and mitigate homelessness uh, within our communities. You said it impacts. Sorry. Oh, you said sorry. it impacts um, different communities. Different. How do you think it impacts Stockton? So what we should understand about Stockton is that uh, over two thirds of our unsheltered population, our homeless community, uh, is really impacted by some sort of behavioral health challenge, mm-hmm. and whether that's uh, substance use disorder. Uh, or or mental health challenges. And so those those are the two main drivers uh, that we've seen um, that those who are experiencing homelessness right now, those who are unsheltered, uh, that's what they're dealing with. And so for us, uh, as a city of Stockton, uh, we work really hard to partner with specific organizations uh, that specialize uh, in those areas uh, so that when we are continuing our outreach in the community through our homeless outreach team, uh, and we make contact with our unsheltered residents when they're ready uh, to take the next step towards healing in their life and to uh, receive help, uh, accept help, we're able to point them in the, dire- in the right direction. And, and that's what it's all about, is because we want people to take the next step toward healing in their life. It's not compassionate uh, for us to allow our unsheltered uh, community just to uh, wither under a bridge or on the street. Um, we want to make sure that they go from where they're at um, to temporary shelter, uh, to emergency shelter, uh, find some housing stability, uh, food resource, whatever they may need. We want to we want to help them take the next step toward healing their life, but also receive the services that they need, right? So that they can overcome uh, any challenges that they're dealing with, if it if it has to do with mental health or substance use disorder. I was reading about like the housing first approach that it seems like a lot of people have been talking about. Is that kind of like what you guys are doing or are you guys doing something different? We are doing as much as we can across the board, right? And so I I said earlier that homelessness is so complex. um, And because it's so complex, you have to take a multifaceted approach to, to dealing with it. So we understand that housing is a big component of homeless, homelessness as well, at two folds. One, from a, from a standpoint of, of preventing homeless, when people have stable housing, uh, we're able to prevent homelessness for ha- from happening in the future, but also increasing our housing options and housing stock so that when people are ready to take the next step toward healing, ready to go from where they're at uh, in their unsheltered environment, uh, to more stable housing, we have that available for them as well. Here's an interesting uh, statistic and in fact about uh, the city of Stockton. Over the last 10 years, uh, our population has grown approximately uh, 10%. Um, and our households have grown, grown approximately uh, 8%. By household, you mean like people in the household? Total in households. House- Right. right. So you have your total population as a city mm-hmm. as a whole, but then oh, you have... So you're saying there's not enough housing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because the vacancy rate 10 years ago, meaning houses available for people to, to rent, move into, was, was, right a around, lot. was right around 4%. It was it was low? It was low. Our vacancy, our vacancy, oh. vacancy rate, excuse me, um, 10 years ago was right around 4%. Our vacancy rate today... Is base, has basically been flat. So what that means is, is we don't, our, our housing stock isn't keeping up with the growth of our population, which could in turn lead to more ho- homelessness. And so focusing on housing, focusing on shelter, 
uh, focusing on supportive services. Uh, again, that multifaceted approach is absolutely cru critical for us to be able to uh, mitigate uh, homelessness moving forward. Do you think it has anything to also do with the affordability of housing? Because 10 years ago, I thought it would have been high because there was a lot of vacant houses. And the reason I know that I was a teenager and being dumb, but, <laughs> but the, there was a lot of vacant housing, but you said it was low. So I'm wondering if it has to do with a lot of affordability that people can't get into these houses as well. Well, you have the supply and demand. Okay? Right. So uh, because of that, that is increasing. That, that's played a, a part and factored into the, the increase in, in prices of, of the homes uh, and, and the cost to, to rent a home as well. Yeah. So co the cost to rent a home is out of this world right now. Ooh, yes, it is. It, you know, it, it is. It is. And, um, but, you know, what's crazy is I will argue that Stockton still is, uh, is the most California. affordable place to live, yeah. you know, in the state of California. Yeah. When the medium sales, uh, home sale price uh, in California is well over 700000 Oh, I didn't know uh, that. In, in the county, San Joaquin County, it's over 500000 uh, Stockton is in the mid 400,000s, the medium uh, price to sell a home. Is there anything you can do about pricing of um, uh, renting homes or renting even apartments or anything? Is there anything that you can do to um, kind of flat out the, so it doesn't go any higher? Because I know every year my rent goes up higher. Is there anything you can put on these um, owners of these apartment building and housing to where they stop it? from going higher? There has been. Uh, there's a policy at the city of Stockton uh, where there's 5% cap each year for, mm. for rent increases. Um, so that's something that's that's in place. But one of the most important things that, that we could do as local government is, is really we can work with um, our affordable housing uh, developers. Uh, we could work with, um, you know, the private sector um, our market rate housing developers as well. Uh, internally, as it relates to our processes, our permitting processes and timeline to be able to streamline um, certain opportunities, uh, that, that's all going to help us increase our housing stock here within the city of Stockton and, and ultimately uh, potentially make things a little bit more affordable as well as we get more supply into the market. Right. Um, so... You brung up that addiction is also a problem of homelessness, and you brung up there are places in place that we can send to help them with mental health crisis or uh, addiction crisis. Do you know the name? Or where are these places? Are they on every corner, southwest, northeast, west, or are there just one place you can go to? Because so, a lot of homelessness doesn't have cars, don't have cars, so they can get to it. That's right. That's right. One of the... Um, one of the things that we did last year uh, is, you know, through COVID, we recognized that there are several needs, um, especially uh, needs that impact or situations and, and needs that are, are situations that impacted our homeless community. Um, and so what we did was with the additional funding that we, we received uh, through our uh, ARPA funding, we, we set aside $5.7 million for what we call a CareLink program here in the city of Stockton. What is CareLink? And that's in partnership with Community Medical Center. Okay. okay. And that CareLink program uh, allows us to respond to uh, certain calls for service in the community that impact our unsheltered uh, residents here in, in Stockton uh, that are dealing with some sort of behavioral health challenge. So substance use disorder, uh, mental health. We want to make sure as a city that we are responding with the right people and the right resources. And then from there, we can get them to um, you know, some sort of transitional housing. One of our transitional housing partners, um, getting them into a detox center or into um, a, a program where they could start the, the process of, of recovery. And so there are several different uh, community-based organizations and, and partners uh, that deal specifically uh, in this space. There's Gospel Center Rescue Mission. Um, there's uh, the Salvation Army. Um, there's um, also 
even other supportive services like St. Mary's Dining Hall, um, Stockton Shelter uh, for, for the homeless. Uh, the list could, could go on and on and on. So if we see somebody like clearly having a mental health crisis, is this who we reach out to if we're worried for either their safety or our safety if this is impacting us? And what is the number? So if you see somebody in the community who's experiencing a mental health uh, crisis, um, and the first thing we want to do is because we don't know the details and of those circumstances and their situation, and we want to make sure everybody is safe in the process, is, is call 911. Okay, um, and our dispatch uh, works closely with the CareLink program um, and our law enforcement uh, to make sure that the right person is responding to that particular call. So the first step would be just to to call 911. We can get medical services out there through that 911 call. Um, you know, we can get the CareLink program out there. So the the police would come first. And then they will assess the situation, and then the caroling program will go out, or everybody comes out at once. The dispatch will receive the call. Mm-hmm. If it's a situation where um, it's it's more in line with what we're talking about, behavioral health challenge, dispatch is trained to uh, to vet that call, uh, and then would dispatch CareLink. CareLink would essentially be the lead in the response, not law enforcement. Uh, because, again, we want to make sure that we have uh, the right personnel, the right services uh, engaging in, in interacting and meeting the needs of, of our, our homeless and unsheltered residents. And it's Carol Link or Carol Link? Care Link. Care Link? Oh, Care Link. I like, was like, I what is Carol Link? Yes. <laughs> I heard it like that, too, so I'm really yeah. glad you clarified. We'll have to make like, like, a little graphic that says the name. Yeah. Um, so CareLink, is that like a program we can donate to, So, or is it just like a program that Stockton has put together? So it's a program that Stockton uh, has invested in that is, is ran by the Community Medical Center. Um, and uh, so there's opportunities to donate to the Community Medical Center, um, to volunteer with the Community Medical Center, or any other agencies that the city partners with or nonprofit organizations in our community that that meet the needs of of our unsheltered population we have a community medical centers huh? that's mm-hmm. that's what we're putting them all across um stockton i feel they have the one right here in the middle of our yeah. campus mm-hmm. yeah. well that's cool because yeah. we have um i've recently read a statistic from an abc article actually it was about our laundry service but it said um from delta that 18% of our student population is experiencing homelessness right now. Yes. Um, so we do, we had a we have a thing at Danner Hall where we they did a presentation and told us about that. And then they um, t- they want to p- let people know that also at Delta they have a place where you can go get a shower. They have a place where you can go get medical needs. They have a place where you can go brush your teeth and all that. I don't know about sleep, but I know that they have stuff where you can make sure you're clean and all that here on campus. Yeah, I, I know that Delta College is doing a lot of great work to meet the needs of, of uh, homeless and unsheltered uh, students. And, and that's important because um, there is a, a large population of, of homeless teenagers young adults and yeah. teenagers. And uh, a big portion of that is the result of those foster youth that have aged out of the system. Right. And so um, the city of Stockton has recognized that. Uh, and, and we've also uh, invested in that space as well uh, with our affordable housing uh, partners. Um, we've set aside funding uh, specifically to uh, help acquire property um, so that uh, our foster, uh, eight, our youth that are aging out of the foster system um, who want you know who have a job and you know who are, who are going to school um, who want to you know take that next step in their life they have a they have a place to go um, and so that's that's very very important not only our, our our youth but also our seniors as well we've invested as a city uh, in in that space too is there any safe uh, shelters for teenage young adults that don't have a space to go because I know there's a shelter downtown. Is there a different one, or is that the same shelter they would go to for um, safe shelter? 
Yes, we have family shelters. Um, We have safe shelters uh, for youth, the children's home. Um, Here in Stockton is is one of those locations. What is our shelter capacity like right now? Do we have room for people? We do. We do have room for people. And um, that's a great question because uh, even right now as we speak, uh, we are closing out a NOFO, it's called Notice of Funding Available. It's a grant opportunity for uh, for organizations to participate in so that they can receive money specifically uh, to fund the expansion of, uh, of shelter. Uh, so we have about 850 uh, beds in the city of Stockton. Uh, we are looking to add uh, an additional 300 beds over this next year uh, in Stockton uh, to in specifically low barrier beds, meaning that uh, if somebody has pets, if they have a pet, if they have possessions, if they have a partner uh, and they need privacy, uh, there's that type of shelter for them. It's, it's more non-congregate. Uh, right. right. They're doing that in front of St. Mary's Dining Hall, right, where they're putting like mo- little mobile homes out there or something? There, we went there. Um, to help the St. Mary's Dining Hall, and they were telling us about that. So St. Mary's Dining Hall is is, is one of those uh, partners for the city of Stockton, and they are looking at, um, you know, bringing micro homes yeah. out there. Yeah, and there's a couple other agencies uh, within the city of Stockton who are looking to do the same thing uh, okay. as well. And that's pretty uh, revolutionary for us and how we're going to meet the needs of our, our homeless and our unsheltered population um, is because up until this point, we haven't had that type of shelter capacity, right? And so our last point in time count, uh, we put our, our homeless, uh, we counted around 900 uh, homeless in Stockton. And uh, so ultimately what that means is essentially we would, we'd have enough beds, theoretically we'd have enough beds uh, for our unsheltered population, but you can't force somebody to take shelter. Right. Uh, They have to want to. And that's a challenge. You know, that's one of the challenges that we're being very intentional about overcoming is, you know, a lot of people who aren't sheltered, uh, there's trust concerns and, Mm -hmm. and, and trust issues. And so through our efforts and our partnerships with the community based organizations is we want consistent faces that are doing outreach. Uh, we have our homeless outreach team that consists of uh, public safety, fire, PD, uh, community-based organizations, uh, this, the county behavioral health. They're out there every week, uh, the same faces, the same groups, going to encampments, going to these different areas, engaging uh, our unsheltered population uh, so that they could build those bridges of trust and rapport so that, again, those individuals who are unsheltered, they can reach out for a hand up for help and uh, we'll be able to provide that assistance and, and take them to that next step. So, and these uh, shelters, are, do they get tested or anything before they, like uh, for drugs or any type of addiction, be, or are they just allowed to go in no matter what? Each shelter has different protocols, different requirements. Uh, And so with the low barrier shelter expansion, however, uh, you don't have to be sober uh, to take shelter. You can't use drugs while you're there. Um, But again, it's about eliminating as many barriers as possible to get people from where they're at, you know, under a bridge or on the street into more of a, a safe and secure environment so that we can connect them with with case management uh, and services uh, in an assessment so that they can get the help that they need. Uh, our, sh- our shelter expansion at Stockton Shelter for the Homeless is going to include a navigation center. And essentially what that will do is that will serve as a, a triage point uh, for our unsheltered uh, residents to better understand their needs and then align them with the right resources. Something else that I was reading about that St. Mary's Dining Hall offers that I think a lot of people aren't familiar with, I hadn't heard about it till I read about it, it's a like an alternate court system, like homeless oh, yeah. court. What is that? So what's unique about San Joaquin County um, is that we have what's called collaborative courts. And so 
Uh, it's actually a program through uh, the court system in San Joaquin County. So, you know, instead of criminalizing homeless, because it's not a crime to be, be homeless. Um, and again, the, the whole purpose is to get people back on their feet. Um, however, if, if, if you are unsheltered and maybe you made the wrong choice and you've broken the law, we have uh, what's called that collaborative court, homeless court, uh, where there's accountability um, and there's, we're connecting that, those individuals uh, with the resources in a program, in a, in a plan, so that they can be re rehabilitated, get back on their feet, um, and be able to go back into the community and, um, and, and be productive and, and give back. And so it's very, very innovative approach. Um, you know, we're one of a few counties uh, that have that, that service and, and that opportunity. And we really, as a county, we pride ourselves with that. Because again, this is about getting people help. This is about getting them back on their feet. Uh, one of the things that um, many people don't know about me is homelessness has impacted me personally. Uh, as, and this was before I became mayor. Not that I was homeless myself, but my father was homeless for a while. And this was during my teenage years. And uh, I was raised by my stepdad, but my my biological father, he, you know, he was the one that was homeless. I hadn't seen him for years, and I just got done playing basketball uh, at Lincoln High School. My mom and I stopped at a, um, uh, a store just to pick up a few things. And um, as I'm, I'm walking in, this gentleman says, hey, young man, you have a dollar. And I looked at him, and it was my dad that I hadn't seen. And I, uh, you know, I, I had to tell him no at that time. And uh, I walked out, we went, Mom and I went into the store, and I walked out, and uh, I, I said bye to him. I told him that, that I loved him. Uh, and, you know, he will tell you, and he's told me this, because he knew what I was going to do with that dollar that, that, that I'd given him. And so, you know, following that, he made some poor choices. Uh, he was held accountable, you know, from a law standpoint. Um, uh, but while he was in his last two years in, in jail, um, you know, he just, uh, he got his life together. He got his life right. Um, and when he got out of jail, um, he committed his life to giving back to the community and at risk youth, what he could never give me. And, um, and, and I'm thankful for that because I don't hold that against, you know, my, my father not being a part of my life growing up and make him making the decisions that he made. I don't hold that against him. Um, I forgave him a long time ago. Um, but I tell people there's nothing more that a son in my situation could ask for is the fact that his, his father could give other young people what he could never give me. And when I walk in throughout this community and my interact with people, um, they come up to me and they tell me, uh, people young and old, because he, he also sponsors other adults uh, through, through AA. And uh, they come up to me all the time and they say, oh, are you, you're Kevin Lincoln's son? Because his name is Kevin Lincoln. He's Kevin Lincoln Senior. <laughs> and um, I said, yeah, oh man, your dad's such a great guy, right? So my whole point with sharing that story is, is our present circumstances in life uh, should not define us, okay? Um, there's opportunities for us uh, to, to make changes. Um, and it doesn't matter how young you are, it doesn't matter how old you are, um, we, we have the ability to control our destiny. And what I would tell the community and the residents of Stockton, uh, whether if you're unsheltered right now, whether um, you have everything that you wished for, is look for ways um, to just take that, make a 1% improvement in your life um, so that you can make a difference in somebody else's life and use your past experiences, um, the struggles, the setbacks, uh, to really prepare, use them as a catalyst to propel you forward. And in effect, um, once you make it through that difficult season in your life, uh, go back and, and, and serve the community uh, in, in that area because nobody can relate to other people 
in that area like you will be able to. And that's what, I, that's what I'm thankful for uh, my dad doing, and, and that's what he modeled for me. And so even today, even though he didn't raise me, um, I'm still learning, for him, learning from him, and it really fuels me uh, to give back to our city and to serve our community the best I can. <laughs> um, so since your father was homeless when you were a youth, is that why you treat homeless not as like a, a bad thing, but as something that we can change together or like that we don't look them at them as bad, but we give them these thi- things, maybe they'll get better. Is that why you look at that that way? Like no, don't look at it as them being bad. Because you know how some people look at it like homeless is like bad and the people need to go somewhere, but you're looking at it as give them AA courses, give them mental health courses, give them all these things. Is that why you look at it that way? You said, a, you said a key phrase, we can change things together. Right. And, and, and that's, exa- that's the absolute truth because what we have to remember is that every person that's homeless uh, has a story. They have their unique story. And every story is imp- is important. So we have to see people for who they are, and we have to see the value in them. Because if we see the value in them, and we take that approach by putting the individual first, not the problem first, but putting the individual first, then maybe they could begin to trust and maybe they could begin to see the value in themselves and, and, and accept the help and take the next step towards healing. Now, don't get me wrong. Homelessness and, and, and blight in our community, uh, it's a quality of life issue. It is mm-hmm. for every resident in Stockton, for um, our families, for our business community. Um, it, it's, it's important that you know, we understand that there is a level of accountability as well. Uh, you, you can't be unsheltered and, and, and break the law and not expect to be held accountable for, right? Because, you know, there's nothing more that I want as a father is for families in our communities to be able to take their kids and their families and their children to the park and not have to worry about, you know, experiencing or seeing something that they shouldn't see. Right. As a result of it, an encampment or, or whatever the situation might be. And so we are working very hard as well as a city to make sure that we protect our critical infrastructure um, while we are uh, providing the necessary services for our unsheltered, unsheltered population. Is there anything the city of Stockton has coming through the pipeline that is going to help homeless crisis or the humanitarian crisis? Absolutely. So uh, one of the one of the big things is a collaboration with the with the county, uh, San Joaquin County, uh, where uh, we're looking at six point five million being uh, allocated from the county uh, to the city, uh, and the city will be able to take that six point five million dollars and distribute that to organizations uh, who are looking to expand our our, our low barrier. Uh, shelter capacity. So that's big. And what the city of Stockton is going to do in that partnership is we're going to provide the operation, some of the operational funding as well uh, to, to get these programs uh, going with these, with these organizations. Um, again, Stockton Shelter for the Homeless is in the middle of a, a shelter expansion right now of approximately 180 beds um, and to include a navigation center. Um, and uh, Gospel Center Rescue Mission is also expanding another 178 beds. Uh, me, myself as mayor, um, I'm advocating at the state and federal level uh, regarding funding for uh, our, our homeless uh, programs and, and, and projects uh, that we have in place now and what we're looking for uh, for to in, in the future. So this is an all hands on deck you know, type of situation. Uh, there's a lot, that, that's just name a few of the things that we currently have in motion that are tangible uh, for for the public to see, can feel, and should make an, an impact um, in in mitigating homelessness throughout our, throughout our community moving forward. 
again, the, the housing, ex the affordable housing expansion uh, projects that we have in place uh, with uh, our, our affordable housing developers is another key because that's more permanent supportive uh, housing. And so again, we homelessness is complex. It's ta it takes a multifaceted approach and that's what uh, we're committed to. Okay, um, so we have our last question, and I want to know, or we want to know, what we can do as individuals to help the humanitarian crisis. What we can all do as individuals to help the humanitarian crisis regarding homelessness in Stockton and San Joaquin County is we can volunteer to serve and volunteer to give to those organizations who are uh, making an impact uh, within the city of Stockton, San Joaquin County, in the area of, of homelessness. Uh, because they have the system, they have the program, they have the resources in place, but they need a community to come in and, and partner with them so that we, they can sustain uh, what they're doing out in the community. Also, uh, we can all volunteer with the city of Stockton. We have a clean city initiative where we focus on uh, reducing the blight uh, through uh, trash and debris, um, picking up trash and debris throughout our community. Uh, over this past year, and so in 2022, we were able to uh, pick up upwards of 2.1 million pounds of trash and debris from the from the streets of Stockton <laughs> through our Clean City in Initiative. Uh, so listen, the, the, the city of Stockton takes quality of life issues very, very seriously, and that's, that's a priority uh, of mine and, and our entire council. And so, but we also need the community you know, to, to join in as well because we also have beautification projects as a result, as a part of our Clean City Initiatives where you know, we're painting uh, facilities, public facilities, and um, helping with some rehabilitation projects for our parks, public spaces. So these are these are all opportunities for the residents and citizens of Stockton to kind of roll up their sleeves um, and and take ownership of, of our community and uh, and and really make a, a difference because uh, this is this is your city, right? This is this is our city. Mm -hmm. And together stuff, we can make a difference. I always see these projects on the news, like after they happen. How, um, where do we go so that we can find out ahead of time and so, like sign up or know where to be? Well, you can visit my website, StocktonMayor.org. Uh, you can visit the city of Stockton. It's a web website. Um, search Clean City Initiative. Um, you can register with uh, what we call Ask Stockton um, through the city of Stockton website or my website, StocktonMayor.org. Um, you could follow uh, me on social media. We provide, inf we put information out on a regular basis. Uh, there's a host of areas. And again, this opportunities like this, uh, discussing critical issues and, and concerns impacting our community, uh, you know, D Media, you guys do a, a great job in this two and nine uh, talk that that we have uh, here. This is an incredible opportunity to get the word out there, you know, and and provide those links. Right. Um, and and again, we want to just keep keep chipping away. You know, we want to be consistent with uh, onboarding more and more people. You know, to be a part of uh, of the change and, and making a difference. And uh, again, together we can. We can make this thing happen. We can change Stockton. That's right. <laughs> we are. Together we are changing Stockton. So thank you for coming in. That was a nice conversation. Thank you. No, thank you. And the entire <laughs> team. Yeah, you guys are all a blessing to, to our entire city. So keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you. 209 Talk has been a production of KWDC 93.5 LPFM, Delta College Radio. This program is made possible by listeners like you. Programming is produced by the students, staff, and faculty of San Joaquin Delta College's Digital Media Department. It is supported by the Delta College Department of Arts, Humanities, and Multimedia, the Career Technical Education and Workforce Development Office, and the State of California. This is a collaboration with the City of Stockton Mayor's Office. Thank you for listening.